Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. I have come up with a very interesting topic today that is what is Thunder Client extension in Visual Studio Code? You can use this particular extension to call the APIs and it's kind of, uh, I would say, not exact replacement of Postman, but uh, exactly what you are doing in Postman, almost similar kind of things you can do in a very light way manner. You can do it in uh, with this client or with this extension. So a lot of developers, they have started using it. The major advantage is that you can use the same client or same extension in your uh, Visual Studio code where exactly you're writing the code and immediately check your APIs and the response over there. You can write some test cases also. You can create the collections and everything. You don't need to switch between two apps like Visual Studio code to the Postman or like that. So let's see how exactly it works. So this is a Git repository and uh, very popular. The rating is really good and uh, more than you can just click on it. You can see that uh, this is actually having around 1,61,580 installs are already done and the rating is really good. Almost 47 reviews and uh, 5 star rating is there. And what do you just need to do? Just need to open Visual Studio Code. Make sure Visual Studio Code is available on your system. So let's open that. And on Visual Studio Code, you have to go to the extensions and simple search for Thunder Client. So when you search for Thunder Client over here, you just need to install it. You will see one icon over here, Thunder Client. And this is the UI for Thunder Client. You can see it here. You can click on new request and this is a dummy API or some sample API is written with the get call and simple send the request. And here you will get the response here like that. And then you can write number of test cases over here. First of all, it supports uh, different types of authentication like basic auth, bear token, OAuth 2.0, headers also you can pass. You can pass the body with JSON, XML, text, form, form encoded, GraphQL also they support. You can pass your GraphQL and variable. We will check this in some time. And then you can write your test also. So for example, let's say I want to write some tests. You simple select your response code should be equal to what? It should be equal to 200. So write 200 here. And then I simple say that my response uh, body or uh, instead of response body, I'll write that, okay, this is my JSON query and I want to check the message uh, attribute and it should be equal to welcome to Thunder Client, something like this. So I simply say it, okay, it should be equal to this value. Other than that, if you really want to check the response time, for example, the response time should be equal to or uh, response time should be greater than equal to, I can write, let's see, within uh, 200 milliseconds or something like that. Fine, if you really want to check something else, the content type, the content type is what? The content type I'm getting as a header, which is, uh, I would say, application JSON. So I simply say, let's see, it should be application JSON. So I simply say, okay, it should contains application JSON. Fine, and then you send the request and let's see. So four tests I have written, and when you run it, you will see the test result over here. First of all, you will see the response we are getting. This is the, these are the header response, response headers cookies and the test results are four test cases got passed so with the same request you can create a test cases and you will get the result over here like that fine and then you can create a collection also for example just like we in postman we do a collection same thing let's create a collection and let's see my collection name is a uh, uh, naveen uh, collection apis something like that enter got created if you really want to create a new request here that also you can do that or the existing request that you have created if you really want to save to that collection that you have created it will ask you what is your collection name Naveen collection API and submit and you can see that this is my uh, collection got added over here and this request got added here now you can create a collection request once again from here and you can click on new request now let's take some more example I have a couple of examples with me for example let's see this is my request rest dot in I want to get list of all the users. So this is my API uh, URL. Just uh, copy this and you simple, uh, let's create a new request here. So click on this and new request. And the request name is, I simple say get, uh, get user API. Enter. The request URL is this. This is a get call. We don't need to pass any header or something. And let's send the request and you can see the request is coming. The response is coming with number of users here. Fine. Now this is the second request that I have created. Now let's create one more request for the post call. For let's say this is the post call. I want to send some JSON payload along with that. So copy this and uh, let's create a new request here. And this is my, let's see, create 
a user API. Press enter and this is a post call. This is the URL that I'm going to use. Okay, sorry, not the, this is not the URL. This is the body. Body as a JSON payload. So you can pass your JSON payload over here. And uh, the request is uh, this one, API user. So I just copy this complete URL from here and uh, simple paste it here. We don't need to pass any header. By default header is it will take this one and send the request. So you can see that, okay, yeah, we are getting a response over here like this. So three requests that we have added over here. Now let's add one more. So let's take something else. Let's see this one. This is what uh, I want to uh, do some booking here. This is a booking API and I want to generate some token here. See, this is a request URL with the post call. And uh, here we have to pass payload add username password. And in the response, it will give you the token ID, something like this. Fine. So let's uh, do this. So I'm again going to create in the same collection, create a new request. And then let's see, this is my uh, create token API. Okay. Press enter and create token API is a get call. Sorry, it's a post call. This is the URL and in the body, we have to pass the JSON payload. So let's copy this payload over here where you have to pass the username, password, admin and password one, two, three, and then you send the request. And here you will get the token over here like that. Perfect. So this is what we are getting it. For example, now what I want that, okay, I want to execute the entire collection that also you can do that. You simple go to these three dots against this collection click on run all and then start running it. So here you can see that awesome. All the requests are getting uh, executed one by one and in the tabular format, you will see the result over here. For this first request, we have written four test cases, but for other test cases, we have not written any test cases. It's showing zero zero, but you can see the result over here. The status code is 200. We are getting it or 201, whatever the status code is there. We are getting it. If you really want to add, some more test cases, you can add it over there later on. And then you can see that, okay, yeah, these are the total test cases from this particular collection. And these are the requests and against every request, these are the test cases are written like that. Then one, we have very good feature here that is called environment, which is like really good. For example, let's see, I want to, let me delete this existing environment that I have actually created for my practice point of view. Let me delete this one. Now let's see, I'm going to create a new environment over here. My environment is, let's see QA. And then I'm going to create one more environment. Let's see, I want to execute my APIs on a stage environment as well. So a star means right now I'm pointing to QA. If you really want to create any variable that you can simply create that. For example, on QA environment, I want to use this API. Okay, username, password, I want to fetch from here. So I can pass the variable name username and the username is what? Admin. So I can pass, this is admin. And one more variable I want to pass, password and the password 123 is the password here. So I don't want to hard code the value in my in my API, right? So just simple save this particular environment variables, username, password that I'm using it. And the same username, password you can use in your APIs now. So simple go to collections. And uh, let's see, this is my create token. And you go to body here. And instead of this hard coded value, what you can do is put two curly braces over here and paste that particular username like this same thing for password so two curly braces like that and this is for password so now the username password will be picked from my where from my environment variables so, and these are my environment variables username and password if i go to my environment make sure you are pointing star means pointing to the qa environment and uh, let's see it is working or not okay now i'm going to send the request and let's see are we getting the token or not See, in this case also, we are getting a token, <coughs> right? So the request variable username password from the JS for the JSON payload is actually coming from my environment variable like that. Okay. You can save it and uh, right. So like this also, you guys, you can simply use it here. Now, if you really want to run the collection once again, so let's go to run all once again and let's see the create token API is getting executed or not. Yes, we are getting the response over here. So likewise, you can simple create the environment variables tomorrow you want to change the variable environment you can change it go to stage and you simply write set active over here see this set active now it is pointing to stage so if you run this particular collection once again or let's say run this particular api once again this 
body is using username password from the QA environment, but my current environment is where to the stage environment. So when I run this, see I'm getting getting bad credentials over here because I'm not passing the correct username, correct password here. That's why I'm getting bad credentials reason here. Got it? So you can switch and then create multiple environment. It was so easy to maintain that. Perfect. Now same thing. Let's see. I want to create a um, one more API. For example, let's say I want to hit this particular um, get API or list user API where page equal to two or single user API where we have to pass a user ID to over here. So what you can do is just simple click on it. And as a path parameter, I want to use that. So I'll do one thing. I just again uh, create a new request here. And uh, let's see, this is my get user by ID. Okay. So get user by ID and I'll just paste it over here but this too is hard coded so I'll do one thing I'll just create one variable directly over here this is my user ID and the same user ID I'll maintain in my environment variable for example so I go to environment variable in QA environment and let's say this is my uh, user ID and the user ID let's say I'm saying two over here like that now this user ID automatically will be picked over here so whenever you have to use any variable see it's coming converting into green color now it means this is the right variable you are using it and then you send the request see we are getting the response over here like that perfect in fact if you really want to write some test cases now so let's go to write some test cases response code should be equal to uh, 200 then i want to verify that okay that uh, some uh, json query from json go to data see go to data and then simple write dot id this id should be equal to what this id should be equal to a uh, two over here. Then I simply write the same thing that JSON data. Okay. Dot. Next time I want to write, let's see, it's a uh, uh, first name. It's uh, first name should be equal to what Janet. So first name is equal to Janet, like that. Okay. Or other than that, if you really want to check something else, also JSON dot support URL. Also, you want to validate, you can validate that. So let's see, these are the three test cases I have written and send the request and you can go to the test result. Three test cases got passed over here like that. So this is so easy to maintain. And uh, if you really want to run your entire collection once again, run all and you simple run it. Done, done and done. Awesome. Right. So three test cases we have written over here, which is absolutely working fine. You can navigate from here to here as well like that. Okay. Now let's create one more request here. This time I'm going to create one GraphQL request. So let's see get user. Uh, this is my GraphQL request. Let's check that I haven't tested yet. So let's check the GraphQL request this time. And this will be my post call. So I have one URL with me, asura.io. And here we have to pass some authentication token also. So we will test our authentication token as well with the, so you can see here we have to pass content type JSON. And this is a beer token. So first of all, this is a post URL. I'll be using it. So this is my URL. And then I'll go back to my header. And I simply say that content type is equal to application JSON. So I simply say that header, first of all, that uh, see all the auto suggestions are coming. And I simply write application JSON. This is awesome. And I want to write authorization. What type of authorization? This is my bearer token. So I just copy this entire bearer token from here. And you simply paste it here perfect and uh, in the body what is a query so let me quickly create a query over here from the user I want ID and name and I want to limit up to 10 users and this is my query just copy this and paste it over here variable I don't want to pass right now and then you simple send the request awesome see this is so fast I'm getting the response over here from my GraphQL API also and uh, you can immediately write some test also here so for example, let's see, let me quickly write response code should be equal to 200 here. And then I'm going to verify some, let's see, JSON query, it is validating or not. So first I'll go to my data and let's see data dot users. And this is an array. So I'll pass zero over here and which should be uh, equal to from zero, what you want dot name I want to pick. And this should be equal to this TUI dot Glenn just copy this guy and it should be equal to this so let's hit the query once again 
and you can see the result absolutely working pass over here like that so you can check any api any rest api or any graphql api amazing tool guys i really liked it and it's very easy so let's say you are working in your development work or some automation framework that you are developing it and then you can maintain in the same editor you can maintain your collections of apis and then immediately check it okay working fine and then you can update your code like that so that's why i really liked it it's very very lightweight and there are a lot of developer they started using it because it's giving this particular option that on the same screen you don't need to change the screen you don't need to go to the postman and everything again and again like that that is the biggest advantage and it's very lightweight right and you can export also see you can export your uh, in the form of json whatever the name that you want to get that so for example is a thunder collection it's giving you a json file and uh, i'll do one thing that is on my desktop i'm going to save it as a json file so as a json file it will be saved over here you can go to check desktop and then see it's available here and again, again if you really want to import or share this particular uh, json file to anyone else they can also do that so simple they just need to go to collections and they just need to import that collection once again so when you import that select that uh, thunderbolt json and then it will be visible over here so you can see one more collection got created here just like we do it in postman okay now one thing we can do it here that uh, what if i want to import a collection which is actually exported from postman so this is my postman guys and i'll do one thing there are a number of uh, collections are available you can see it. for example let's say this is api playground and there are a number of i mean number of requests are available i'm going to export this collection from my postman okay so let's export that and let's say this is my json i'm going to save it fine and the same json i try to import in my visual studio code in thunder client so let's do that simple go to import here and uh, go to desktop awesome api playground you can see all the requests are coming over here and you can send the request and then you can just hit your request from here directly so this is pretty awesome feature same thing you can export this uh, collection from thunder client and then import in your uh, postman also you can do that so that's all for this particular video guys i hope you liked it please try this and it's very very lightweight very easy i'm not saying replacement of postman once again but it's a great tool a good competitor of uh, postman but in postman there are so many features like mocking new services a new man <clears throat> uh, integration with ci cd and all such things i think that's not the purpose thunder client is solving that's a different purpose that's just to give you just to give you a provision where you can work on po on your thunder client and on your code base together on the same screen in the same editor that is the main advantage of that so i hope you liked it please try let me know if you have any issues till then take care and God bless you all.